I was the first wholesaler in America to use mass email marketing. Then I added in text message marketing in 2010. By 2011, I was smoking everybody with text marketing and ringless voicemail marketing. Nobody had even heard of ringless voicemail marketing in 2011. Yeah. We built AI into our software years ago. We were able to score every homeowner in the United States, yeah. be able to understand probability and propensity models on every homeowner using 2000 data points. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're sending marketing campaigns to people we know want to sell mm -hmm. because the AI told us they wanted to sell. The homeowner didn't even know they wanted to sell. I was the first real estate investor in the United States to get over a million followers on social media. My first full year after meeting Lyle, I made $1.3 million. I yeah. murdered it my yeah. first year. A clever investor. How's it going, baby? What's going on, brother? Excited to have you on the podcast. So, what? I mean, I think you are one of the most famous real estate investors ever. Infamous. Infamous. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but thank you. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, does that mean I'm old? No, absolutely not. No, no. How old are you? 45. Okay. Yeah. You're young. You're young. Yeah. You're killing it. But yeah. So when I first started in uh, real estate, I would always see you on YouTube mm -hmm. and I had no idea what you did, but I'm like, this guy's doing real estate and he's like crushing it. And then as I was in the business longer and longer, I started realizing who you were and what you did. So, you know, it's crazy to have you on the podcast. Yeah, now. he's loud. He's nerdy. He's, <laughs> he's, he's obnoxious. Who does he he's think he front. is? Stand in front of Chase Bank with yeah, a Lamborghini yeah. and a profit check. <laughs> you, you know, I needed a hook, right? Yeah. You know, like marketing's tough. You, you got to really stand out, you know. And yeah. long before Ty Lopez was ever doing the Lambo mm. thing, we were being loud in front of the bank with yeah. cool cars and uh, and it works and it sucks that it works. Sometimes yeah. it, I wish I could just look at the camera and say, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to help you break free of the rat race. Yeah. I got this formula. It's working for me. Let me give it to you. Yeah. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work like that. You got to be outrageous to a point. It's, it's almost like edutainment. Yeah. They're willing to listen to the knowledge part of it if they're being entertained. Yeah. And like, what are, what are some of the things you've done in real estate, like transactions or Damn. apartments or whatever? Well, I've been in for 20, over 20 years. I've done uh -huh. every type of deal under the sun, thousands of deals. I've, I've done over half a billion dollars worth of real estate transactions so far. Um, uh, just one we bought last year was uh, a 432 unit class B institutional grade for 130 plus million dollars. So, I mean, that's one transaction I did yeah. last year out of many. And so it started off just little tiny houses, you know, and mm -hmm. just wholesaling houses, got really good at that. And then transitioned to finally, like, you know, you sell a wholesale deal and you make five or 10 grand. Yeah. And then you watch the person you sold it to go make 110 grand. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell just happened here? Like how I'm on the wrong <laughs> side of the deal. <laughs> and it was almost like that with every step of my evolution. I, I mm. wish I could look at you and go, I had the courage immediately to go right into commercial. Mm. I just bought two banks, literally just closed on two old, one old Bank of America and one old Wells Fargo. Uh -huh. These are big multi-million dollar commercial deals. Never in my wildest dreams would I thought I'd be buying $130 million apartment buildings and old bank wow. buildings. And I got a hard street corner we're developing right now. That's, mm. uh, uh, I paid, uh, three million dollars for the hard street corner i'm going through the entitlement process sub, mm -hmm. subdividing into four parcels i already have lois on all four parcels big commercial what i'm getting at is big commercial is what i'm focused on right now because that's yeah. where the big players play i wish i had the courage to do that in the beginning mm. but i didn't yeah i was a house guy that could wrap his head and confidence level around flipping a house yeah and that's what I did. And I got really good at it until I sold one and somebody made a bunch of money. I go, I got to have the courage to rehab. Like yeah. I got to just figure this out. And yeah. I, and, and, and it's funny because every time I've ever done that, you like, you, t you get that confidence, you take that step forward, you get your ass kicked. And then you actually take like three steps back and you're like, should I try that again? Mm -hmm. My first rehab, mm -hmm. the contractor dude mm -hmm. who I met at a RIA event convinced me to buy like $30,000 worth of materials for this renovation. And I got it all delivered. I bought it at Home Depot. I got it all delivered. Next day, I get a call saying, Cody, you're never going to believe this. All the materials got stolen overnight. Ooh. I was furious. He, and I went over there. There's like, you know, the door's broken and everything's gone. And you're just like, God, how did this happen? I don't have the money yeah. to replace this. Yeah. But, you know, and then I started after a week or two, it started like, I started like thinking about like all the conversations I had with this guy in my head. And I'm like, wow, I think maybe he had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Come to find out 
his contractor license was no good. I never checked with the the the, yeah. the department of registrars of yeah. contractors or whoever, and I never made sure he wasn't sued. He's been sued like six times in the past. Damn. He had a history of going and getting materials and then going and returning them, getting a, a card, a credit, yeah, on a like a, a card, and somehow finagling the system. Mm -hmm. And here I am, just another one of his suckers, not yeah. doing my reason, not just being naive. And that was my first rehab experience. I got my ass kicked mm -hmm. and I ended up losing money on that deal. Yeah. But like all things in real estate, you got to have a bounce back spirit. And so yeah. I did my uh, another rehab and I made all my money back plus a whole bunch more yeah. that I lost plus a whole bunch more. And I was like, okay, now I guess I'm a rehabber. Yeah. And so I started cherry picking them out rehabbing. And then eventually my mentor was yelling at me a lot and I got hit with a huge tax bill one year. Like a six hundred, five hundred fifty, six hundred thousand dollar tax bill. My mentor's like, "See, you're an idiot. Oh. You're not a real estate investor, Sperber. You're a flipper. Yeah, you're a speculator. You're an yeah. arbitrager. Mm. Like, get in the game already. Like, own real estate, live tax free." Mm -hmm. And he did all his deals inside his self directed Roth. Mm. So he, that's all he did was tax free mm -hmm. deals. But I was so used to the transactional money that I, I couldn't like wrap my young head around. Like, why yeah. would I want to do that? I'm in my early 20s. I'm making now, I'm for the first time, I was the first millionaire in my family. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would I mess up something that's working? Yeah. And then you get hit with that tax bill and you're like, that's why I'll never win this game mm. if I don't learn how to master the rules. Mm -hmm. And you can't go fast if half of all your money is getting eaten away in taxes and then another large portion is getting away, eaten away in inflation. Yeah. And so I just finally smartened up and I started cherry picking out deals. And that's when I really leaned in and taught myself creative finance and how do I own real estate? How do I become a landlord? And then I started getting multifamily deals and owning commercial projects. And mm -hmm. I guess the rest is history. Now you yeah. look back 20 years later and there's not much I haven't done in this space. Yeah. Wild. So there's definitely levels. So I want to break it down, I guess, like mindset wise. So let's go to the very beginning. The The first deal you did was what? Up? You said a wholesale or a flip? My first closed transaction was a $40,000 wholesale profit. Okay. And mm -hmm. then what made you want to get into wholesaling in the beginning? I was broke. Like how broke? Like negative $30,000. <laughs> Oh, broke. How'd you get that negative? <laughs> yeah, I had credit card debt. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Like, a friend of mine flipped a house and made a whole bunch of money. Yeah. And showed up with a new car, and I said, "How'd you get the car?" He said, "I flipped a house." I said, "Bullshit." Yeah. You don't have any money. How How did you flip a house? You don't have a license. You're yeah. not a real estate guy. You're a tech guy. He was actually like a software guy. Uh -huh. And I'm like, "How did you do that?" And he goes, "Well, I have a friend that is a mortgage guy that taught me this process called wholesaling." Mm -hmm. And I said, what is that? And he pulls out a napkin and pencils it out on the napkin. We're at lunch and yeah. I'm staring at the napkin and I'm going, I've never heard of this. Like, yeah. how come, and this, you got to go back to 2003. How old were you? I was like 23. Okay. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. Really young. Yeah. And I was, and I, there was no, uh, there was no internet information. There was no courses online. There was no social yeah. media. The iPhone didn't even exist. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think that came out to 2006 or something. Yeah, so. And so it was like very like shocking to me that this thing was happening out there. And I kind of yeah. thought it was a scam or BS or yeah. he got lucky and mm -hmm. just whatever. And he's like, no, I got another one. I'm about to close. And I was like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. And that's how my journey trying to figure out holes. And back then what you would do is you'd read the back of a newspaper, believe it or not, mm -hmm. like in the Arizona Republic in the back, there'd be like a little classified section that would say real estate conference, Reno, Nevada tickets, $300, call this number. Yeah. And I would call the number, buy a ticket from like somebody on a phone. And I would buy a plane ticket by myself, fly to Reno, Nevada by myself, come to a seminar yeah. by myself yeah. and stand there and just awe that in these gurus that were so good. Yeah. They were like sales experts. Like, yeah. but I'm so naive and I didn't know what I didn't know. So they loved me. Yeah. And that's how I got into credit card debt. I would roll around with my credit card. Literally, I'd just throw it up on stage. Like they'd start <laughs> pitching and I'm like, I'll buy it. Because I so desperately wanted yeah. to 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 be one of the people up on stage. Mm-hmm. Like mm -hmm. I would sit in the, I started in the very back of the conference yeah. with my arms folded, skeptical, that guy. Yeah. And then I see the people parading around like I did two deals. I quit my job. I did. Yeah. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Yeah. All right. Maybe I can, maybe I can be one of these people someday. Mm -hmm. And then the next conference I went, I sat in the middle and the next conference I went, I bought the front tickets and, but I bought every course that I could get my hands on Uh from Al Lowry to, you know, Jack Miller. It didn't matter. Like all the old school gurus, I bought all their stuff. Yeah. Carlton Sheets. I've never heard of any of these people. Yeah. I mean, these are the OGs. OGs. Yeah. Like when, what we see on there right now, we're just regurgitating shit that they yeah, kind of pioneered. Yeah. All the sub two seller carryback, creative yeah. finance wraps, AITDs, these guys invented these models mm. and then taught everybody how to do yeah. creative finance. Now, now you got the Pace Morbys of the world and yeah. the Cody Sperbers of the world that are cool and online. Yeah. But back then you had to go to a seminar to get it. So I put myself in a lot of debt took me 14 months to do my first deal. Mm. So everybody, by the way, anybody watching this right now that's struggling, like you're new and you got in this game and it's now been like three months, four months, and you're second guessing yourself and that self-limiting voice is getting really loud and your parents are sitting you down saying, I think you're making a mistake, stay focused on school and and your friends are making fun of you or you post online in the beginning, I'm gonna go get real estate rich and now four months later, people are making fun of you on social media. I promise you it will happen for you. It might not be on your time frame, but it'll happen if you just don't quit. Imagine 14 months. Mm-hmm. And I, I quit and unquit 30 times, and I finally got a deal. Okay. And at the time, I was a bookkeeper. Mm. I, I, I had gotten so broke, and one of the times I quit, I had to go get a job because I had to pay all these credit card bills. Yeah. And I was really stressed, and, and my girl at the time was like, you're, you know, basically like, go get a job. Like you're being a financial loser. Yeah. Like go figure your way to unbury yourself from all this debt. And so, uh, you know, you're in that, that place where you quit and then you unquit and then you go to one more seminar. Yeah. And it was at that seminar that changed everything for me. And that's why I love live events. That's why I love seminars and workshops. And I'm a huge yeah. proponent of masterminds mm-hmm. because it was at a seminar that I met my first mentor. Mm. And that's the game changer for a lot of people in the beginning. Got we it. buy these courses, we buy these things, we watch these videos and we get stuck in education world. Yeah. But it's not linear, meaning like every deal takes on a life of its own. It's yeah. never like, per, like we can understand like the technical mechanics of a wholesale deal, but there's people involved. Yeah. And there's a lot of emotions involved and a lot of psychology involved. Uh-huh. And so a lot of times we are our own worst enemies. I I got to a point where I was overwhelmed with too much information. It was like drinking from a fire hose. 100%. And I know a lot of new people in this game, they feel that way because they go and they they meet somebody and they're like, oh, buy this course, buy this course. Next thing you know, it's like- Sub two, Airbnb, flipping houses. It's like Swiss cheese, right? You got 20 courses, (laughs) all like, it's like Swiss cheese. They all have these giant missing pieces of information and you can't figure out why I can't tie it together. Mm -hmm. What's missing is a mentor. The mentor is the person that's going to say, man, stop listening to all that. Put these blinders on, do these three things over and over and we'll talk on Tuesday and see your progress. And then Tuesday comes, all right, let's course correct just one degree, fix these couple of things. I'll talk to you on Friday. Yeah. Hey, I got this lead. What should I do? Do these three things and then go and call me when you're done. Yeah. Oh, it made it so much easier. Mm. And all of a sudden I got progress. All of a sudden, I mean, my first deal was a really tough deal. Okay. Really tough. For a, for a first deal, I'm actually proud that it was really tough because everything after that was super easy. Yeah. But it was a bankruptcy, a foreclosure, and a divorce. Damn. <laughs> it was like all everything that's <laughs> yeah. crappy in a deal. And the guy that I was working with was a mess. Mm. Just an emotional mess. Yeah. And every other investor that showed up made the same mistake. And like, this was a smoking hot deal in downtown Phoenix in the historic district. Mm. Everybody wanted this real estate because it was r- uh, really a great area of town that was up and coming and all these old houses were being remodeled into these cute, like boutique style houses. Yeah. And it was in the Willow historic district of downtown Phoenix. And I showed up at the house and the guy, every other investor in town rolled up and they talked too much Mm. and they told him how much his house was worth. And they told him what kind of deal they wanted to structure with him. And they just talked at this guy over and over. And because I was new and I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't do any of that. Mm. And I, I think that's a mistake a lot of new people make. Yeah. I rolled up and I was like, and I called Lyle right before who was my mentor. And yeah. I said, Lyle, how do I do this deal? I don't know anything about foreclosure, divorce or bankruptcy. Yeah. He said, you don't need to know anything about any of those things. Cody, you just need to do two things. And I, I'm like sitting there waiting for like this Yoda advice. Yeah. Right? I'm like, okay, what's the two things? He said, you ready? I said, yeah. He goes, you got to be authentic and you got to be enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. I'm like, 
that's your wisdom. That's what I'm paying you for. Like yeah. as my mentor, be a, where's like the special phrase that I say to get the guy to yeah. sign the contract. And he's like, oh, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You got to understand this guy's in pain. And if you just ask a lot of really great questions and just try to understand him as a human, mm -hmm. you're going to get this deal. Mm. But don't pretend you're a good investor. Don't pretend you're a slickster. Don't try yeah. to overcome objections. Just be raw and authentic and yeah. enthusiastic that you want to help. Mm -hmm. And that's all I did. Mm. And I ended up getting that deal because I was the only one. In fact, not only did I get the deal, he invited me in his house. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes later, we're both crying at his kitchen table. <laughs> and then 20 minutes later, he's making me spaghetti and we're eating meal, a meal together. <laughs> and in the middle of the meal, I said, listen, brother, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not the right guy for you. I don't know how to help you. I don't know anything about bankruptcy, divorce, or foreclosure. Yeah. And he said, Cody, get out your pen. I want to do this deal with you. You're the only one that actually took the time to get to know me. Mm. And that's when it kind of clicked. I was like, this is a, this is a people business. This is it. Yeah. All I got to do is learn how to connect with people and ask great questions. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me how to do business with them. Yeah. And that's how I was able to go off and do a bunch more transactions after yeah. that is kept it simple. What about, so the mentor you had, did you pay him or it was just like a friend that you No, paid? no. Successful people value what? Time. That's it. Time. Yeah. And when uh, you, you can't roll up to an old timer like that and go, Hey, will you give me something? Will you give me mentorship? Mm. They're going to go, do you know you're the 10,000th person to ask me of yeah. something from me? Yeah. Like, I don't have time for that. I'm busy with 50 real estate transactions and my yeah. family and all this other stuff. And so you got to understand, like, I was never scared of cutting a check to get proximity. Mm. I didn't have the money. Yeah. And a lot of people find themselves in that situation. Like, they don't have the money. But I know a lot of people that have the money and they're scared to cut the check. Oh, yeah. And I'm That's like, right. I don't get that. Yeah. It's money. Money's, money is going to leave your bank. It's a zero sum economy. Yeah. There's no way you're holding on to that money. Yeah. You're going to spend it on something stupid. You might as well invest in yourself and buy proximity to power players because proximity changes your psychology. Mm -hmm. Proximity is power. Yeah. And so I just needed to get around guys like Lyle who had at the time, I think he had like 16 or $18 million in a self-directed Roth, all tax free. And he had ton, like crazy amounts of real estate. Yeah. And when we talked, I can tell he was teaching me things you couldn't learn in books, mm. just wisdom stuff, yeah. yeah, real, real deal maker stuff. And I was like, you know what, whatever I got to do to get proximity deal. Yeah. And he said, it's, ten, it's ten, 10 G's. Mm -hmm. He actually gave me, you want to hear this? Yeah. He actually gave me three. He said three things. He said, Cody, I'll take you on as a mentor, but there's three things. Number one. You're going to come up with $10,000 in $5 bills by tomorrow. What? <laughs> number two, what? number two, you get to keep, he goes, do you, do you like baseball? And I said, yeah. And he goes, like baseball, three strikes and you're out. If you talk back, you, you give me any slack. You don't do what I tell you to do. By the third strike, I'm keeping your money. I'm firing you. I'll block your number. I'll never talk to you again. No. I said, damn, okay, what's the third one? He said, do you, um, your first big deal, you get to keep 100% of whatever you make on your first big deal. If you do a little deal, you get to keep that too. But your first big deal, you keep 100% of it. Mm -hmm. After that, forever into the future until I say otherwise, or we stop working together, I get to decide how much you get and how much I keep. If I'm your mentor, I'm taking a, bit, a piece of every one of your real estate transactions. Oh my goodness. And I was sitting there and you got to remember 14 months, I haven't done a deal. I, I almost did a deal like 13 times, <laughs> and, but I have never done a deal. Yeah. And I wanted to do a deal so bad. And I really believed that he was the catalyst to get me there. And so I was like, how bad can this be? I lose 10 grand. I talk, you know, my personality, I knew I was going to break rules. Yeah. And so I knew I was going to get two yeah. strikes, maybe yeah. not the third one, but, yeah. and, uh, and then, you know, he takes, he'll probably be cool. Like he'll take some of my deals, but like not all my deals. no. That mofo took a lot of my deals for years, <laughs> for years, <laughs> for years. So my first big deal was that 40 K deal. Yeah. I got to keep all of that. Well, at the time I was making 34 grand a year as a bookkeeper. Yeah. So in like six hours, I made more than a year's worth of bookkeeping work. Yeah. So I quit my job the next day. Right. And but went into real estate full time. That first? I paid, I paid my dad. Your debt. Well, I quit my job as a yeah. bookkeeper. I went yeah. into real estate full time yeah. because I believed now that I could do another deal pretty quickly. Yeah. And I actually did my second deal within 
two months of my first deal. Okay. And then my third deal was within a month and my fourth deal was in two weeks and like I okay. condensed time. Yeah. But the, after that first deal, he took whatever he wanted. It depend on how much I leveraged him or used him or if he connected me with the buyer, okay. if he brought the money, if okay. he, anything he That's did, he took, fair, yeah. he took a rip. Yeah. And sometimes he, it depends on how he felt. Sometimes it was like a little bit and sometimes it was a lot of bit. Yeah. But I was always cool with it because I was on this train now doing transaction at the train. My first full year after meeting Lyle, I made $1.3 million. Damn. That's gross or net? Like what? Uh, gross. Gross. Like on my take? tax returns, I was staring at my tax returns. It said, you made $1.3 million. And how much did you pay him of that? No, he made money on top of that. Oh, I, okay, I did a okay, couple million good. dollars okay. worth of transactions. Okay, that's good then. In yeah. my first year. I yeah. murdered it my yeah. first year. Totally worth it. Funny part about that story, just to close the loop. Years and years and years later, like six, seven years later, he, I, he had been taking money from me for years. Yeah. We got on this one deal. He, I barely even talked to him. I maybe just told, he maybe said, what deal are you working on? And I yeah. told him about the deal. I closed the deal and he said, okay, I want my cut. And I'm like, no, Lyle, like you didn't even do anything on this deal. And he's like, no, we talked about the deal. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way, bro. Yeah. Like, no, like yeah. I, I'm not. And he, he said, I'll give you 10% of the deal. You can keep a little bit. And it was a big deal. It was like probably a 30K deal or whatever it was. And he was trying to give me like, you know, five grand or some shit. And I'm like, it's not, no, I'm not doing this. It doesn't work like that. Like I didn't use your money. I didn't. And he said, give the money. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you like, this is our deal. And he took the money and I, I literally cussed him out on the phone after that. I gave him his money and I got on the phone with him. I said, you know what? I've been thinking about this. I'm like, you're a piece of, you know what? I can't even believe you're taking advantage. I'm your number one student. I've been by far your biggest cheerleader. I've told hundreds of people about you. Like there's nobody that you've ever mentored that's done better than me. I've made you more money than anybody else. And you're going to take advantage of me. You're, you know what? You're a real piece of, you know what? I can't even believe I wasted my time with you over the last few years. I should have cut you a long time ago. I'm just ripping them. Right. And at the end of me just going crazy, you just hear him start going. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just clapping and smiling. And I'm like, the hell's your problem? Like, what are you doing? And then I, I started to understand. He said, you should have done this years ago. Oh. You didn't need me for years. You've been using me as a crutch for years, Sperber. You're ready to go out on your own. Like, what the hell's your problem? What? You, you, you're, you're Mr. Ego out there buying all this nice shit, acting all cool in front of all your friends. But around me, you're like, I'm your, I'm your crutch. And I'm, I'm just like, damn. Why wasn't I ready? Why, why didn't I do this sooner? But a great mentor uses, and he always did, he always used the Socratic method when he taught me. And the Socratic method allows the pupil to discover the truth. He, he could have told me a long time ago, hey, you're ready to go out on your own, go do it. Yeah. But by putting me through a process, mm -hmm. he got me there. Mm -hmm. Where I internalized the, tr the change within me and mm -hmm. I was ready. I never needed him from that day forward. Wow. We had never done it since that day. I had never done a real estate deal with him, but he allowed, he pushed me out of the nest and allowed me to discover the truth on my own yeah. by putting me through the process. And I always remembered that. So now when I mentor people, it's kind of fun to like kind of mess with some of my students that yeah. I know, Hey, they're ready, but I'm watching them hold on a little too tight to me yeah. in, in my network. And I get to kind of do the same thing back with some of them. Yeah. That was the most wild story I've ever heard. <laughs> That was crazy. I didn't know where that was going, but that was an amazing story. That was crazy. So a lot to unpack from that. So, okay. So that was your beginner uh, mentor. Did you find another one that helped you take uh, your business to the next level? Yeah, dozens. Like at what level were you at when you left him? Like what were you doing? Uh, I mean, I was seven years in the business. I had just probably started to become known around town as the clever investor to the point where people were now paying me to mentor them. Yeah. We were killing it. We were, we were one of the biggest wholesale shops in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, uh -huh. doing, it's not like back then it's not like today. Like I have some of my students have gone off, you know, uh, Josiah Grimes and Hunter and mm. uh, like a lot of the Keegley guys, uh, Jamil, they all came through my camp, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. I, at one point or another, their whole world was involved like underneath the clever yeah. brand. Yeah. And 
um, they, you know, for me, I was doing, you know, 15, 20 deals a month. And I thought that was massive, like unbelievable. Yeah. And then they go off and do 80 something, 90. And I'm yeah. like, wow, that's another level of cool. Yeah. yeah. So I never did like what some of these guys went off and did. Yeah. Um, but I was consistent. I was always doing 15 to 20 deals every single month consistently for many, many years. And, uh, people were paying me, people would just show up and go, I'll give you 10 grand. Mm hmm if you let me shadow you for a day, I'll pay you 10 grand if you give me some of your systems or your software, access to your buyer's list. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, I grew, I grew from there. And then, yeah. I, and then I started at the birth of social media. I was the first one to like really start documenting everything and putting it online. Yeah. There was, nobody did it before me. There was mm -hmm. no blueprint or model for me. Yeah. So I, I couldn't have a mentor to teach me how to be a online influencer slash educator yeah because there it had not been it, it, i was at the birth of it it didn't exist before me yeah. so i had to take like this old school infomercial model and figure out how to get it online so mm -hmm. un, unfortunately I, I had to wing it and figure it out yeah now a lot of my students like the pace morbies of the world they yeah. they look at my model and then go out and make it significantly better yeah whereas i had to invent the model yeah but i've had tons of like dean graciosi is a mentor of mine mm. um uh, this guy, Joel Marion, you probably never heard of him. He, no. he, he's like the LeBron James of email marketing. He had 22 million people in his email database. He taught me how to be an email marketer. Uh, Dean taught me how to speak on video. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, this guy named Matt taught me copywriting and how to write copy. Mm -hmm. So that way I can convert and sell through the written word. Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of real estate mentors, you know, and, and, and healthy competition was sometimes my mentor. Mm -hmm. Me and Sean Terry are both from the same neighborhood, like same area in Phoenix, Arizona. And Sean Terry and I were competing along the way. And do you know who Sean Terry yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Sean has gone off to be a very successful, well-known, respected wholesaler and educator. Well, me and him were like parallel for many, many years. So we would compete against each other on how to market and how to get yeah. deals. And we've done a lot of deals together. We competed on deals. I lost to him. He lost to me. Yeah. And a lot of times my mentors were just another peer that was competing against me. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's super deep. And yeah. Think... But, but just to tie yeah. on it i've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on consultants mm -hmm. masterminds and workshops yeah when i hear somebody go like oh it's 10 grand i'm like you wussy yeah. 10 grand ain't nothing yeah. that's 0.001 percent of what i spent mm. you want to develop skills and capabilities cut the check yeah you want to get proximity to power players buy your way into that room yeah period yeah. Like I don't even hesitate. I've spent a hundred thousand dollars on a single mastermind mm -hmm. and I've done it multiple years in a row because in that mastermind was a hundred other badasses that all cut a hundred thousand dollar check that yeah. I knew that if I was in that room with them, I was going to get new business partnerships, build my network, yeah. raise capital, do, get deal flow. Yeah. Like, and I leveraged that group. I mean, I turned that hundred grand investment into tens of millions of dollars. Got it. What? So few things like we have you met one of our students just now clint cooper mm -hmm. same thing so clint came to our program i think in like late 2020 and i remember i spoke to him he just sold his business that was like a sports betting business he never did real estate and he was like hey brian like uh you know i'm excited you know i want you and ryan to mentor me like i'm gonna crush it and i'm like all right great he's like how do i how do i do 10 deals like before the end of the year it was like october i was like i was like honestly dude like you should just slow down Try to do your first deal. And then, you know, we'll talk about 10. And he's like, well, like, okay, like, you know, I'm just ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's good. And he's like, like, what do I do? I was like, honestly, just start calling agents. Start calling agents in your area. Um, and then let me know when you get a, a, a lead and we'll run it. Literally not even a week. Like we had an accountability call. He's like, I got this deal. I was like, all right, let's see how stupid this deal is, you know, because usually their first deals are stupid. And then um, I was like, all right, this is a good deal. And then as a mentor, right, I'm like, all right, it's a good deal. Like, I would buy it. And he's like, okay, I'm going to buy it. Like, no hesitation, nothing. And then he bought it. And I was like, all right, this guy's serious. Because there's mm -hmm. been other people where they're like, oh, uh, run this deal. I run it. I'm like, yeah, it looks good to me. And they're like, oh, man, like. 
okay, well maybe I'll do the next one because this isn't that way, the truth? Though? Yeah. <laughs> how many people? How many people miss out on so many great opportunities by overthinking and over preparing and over planning? That's the biggest cost. Mm -hmm. One of my one of my early mentors is like, our biggest cost is the cost of opportunity that we have a lead in our system that we spoke to. We never called them back. We didn't push through the objection, and we go research, and they sold to someone mm -hmm. else. Millions, dude, I would do that once a quarter with our sales team. I'm like, all right, what happened to this house on uh, Earl Avenue, John? Oh, yeah, they didn't want to sell. They sold, mm. and it's relisted. Yep. Oh, and the leads are bad, right? You said the leads were bad, right? Okay, and then I'll just go through. So, yeah, that's... Everybody says that. Yeah. You know how many of my students try to convince me that the marketing doesn't work. Yeah. In my area, the marketing doesn't work. I put out the direct mail. I didn't get any calls. And I'm like, I just want you to understand what you're trying to tell a guy Yeah. who has gone off, tried every marketing strategy on their son. I have marketing stamina. Yeah. I'm a crazy good, one of the best in the world at the risk of sounding arrogant. Yeah. Like there's nobody that can hang with me. I'll smoke everybody. You're trying to convince me that planes don't fly right now. Yeah. Like, you know that it's not going to work with me. Yeah. You can do that with, like, your friends and family and, like, when you're yeah. justifying why you're losing yeah. or not winning. Yeah. But you're not going to do that with me. Like, yeah. you know how many times I put out marketing, it didn't work. I tried again, it cracked. You're like, yeah. it just works, and all of a sudden I make a ton of money. Yeah. You got to have stamina in yeah. this business. Yeah. So, okay, I want to touch on that point, and then I want to talk about marketing. So there was a student recently, I think it was, like, sometime early this week or last week in the morning, he called me. He was like, yeah, man. Like, I just don't know how I'd be successful because, you know, I don't know anything and, you know, people aren't going to follow my lead. Like, who would who would do this with me and blah, 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 blah. And in the middle of it, I was like, dude, honestly, like, I'm not going to buy it. So you're kind of just wasting your time. Like, if you want to tell your wife and all these other people these things, like, mm -hmm. you can do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're busy. Dude, I had two kids. I'm sorry. I had a, I was a single father. I had two jobs. I went to college. I invested in a barbershop that was failing. I was addicted to drugs. I was this, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I made it work. And you, yeah. the guy that has a nine to five, just can't figure out the time to like get it done. So yeah, that, that reminded <laughs> me of that conversation. Well, you know, that imposter syndrome thing is real in yeah. a lot of people, you know, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of people have been beat up their whole lives and yeah. told no a million times. I heard something somewhere that the average baby mm -hmm. hears per day from their parents, the word no, some like something like 195 times a day. Wow. It was like some ridiculous number. And it's because when the baby starts crawling, yeah. like in the wrong direction, what does the mom say? No. No, no, no. no. It's not just no. It's no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Hold on. Yeah. Slow down. No, no, no. Yeah. And they hear that and condition themselves yeah. to, to hit that wall and have those self-limiting beliefs. And, and our job as mentors really is to help people shift their psychology just one or two degrees. Yeah. The technical side of real estate is real easy, Yeah. right? Way. I could give you a, a little downloadable ebook and show you how to wholesale. Yeah. Super easy. Yeah. The psychology shift comes in like understanding like how to push through all those mental barriers yeah. along the way to yeah. keep you in the game long enough for you to get your first win. Yeah. So I want to, we don't have a lot of time because you're about to go speak on stage. So I want to talk about marketing and then mental bar barriers and then we'll wrap up. So marketing. Like, what's the secret sauce? Like, you, <laughs> you you are one of the best marketers ever in the real estate yeah. business. So, like, what? what give us. Some I mean, gems. first off, go read the book "Who Moved My Cheese." Okay. Right. I don't remember the author's name, yeah. but read the book. It takes you like an hour. Yeah. That's the marketing game. <laughs> That's it. Change. Yeah, it's <laughs> constantly like what works this month might not work next month, and you yeah. got to be nimble and you got to have stamina. For many, many years, door knocking was the thing. I would get a list of foreclosures. I'd go knock the doors. I'd work my way in. I'd get the deals. When that stopped working, the foreclosure meltdown happened. Next thing you know, we're down at the auction. We're buying down at the auction. When that stopped working, I'm sending out hundreds of thousands of pieces of direct mail. All along the way, I'm putting out, somebody's like, oh, do bandit signs work? Yes, they work. Mm -hmm. But you got to put out 300 of them yeah. every single two weeks in order to get results, yeah. right? And then track track how many phone calls you get and how many conversions you get. And then you can start to understand, well, I got to put out 900 bandit signs to get two deals. Yeah, It's like, okay, does that financially work for you? Yeah. And so 
things shift and once everybody catches on, mm -hmm. I'm already out of that long before the rest of the world's catching on because I was an early adopter. My marketing secret mm -hmm. is that I'm paying attention to where the hockey puck is going, not to where it currently is. Mm. It's like that Wayne Gretzky quote, right? Yeah. It's like I'm out in front of the, 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 the culture of this industry. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. What did I start doing two and a half years ago? that you're hearing about everywhere today. AI? AI. Yeah. I was smoking everybody with AI. Nobody even knew how I was getting deals with AI. Yeah. We built AI into our software years ago. Mm -hmm. I started using that. We, we were able to uh, um, score every homeowner in the United States. Yeah. Be able to understand probability and propensity models on every homeowner using 2,000 data points. Mm -hmm predict who's going to sell at a discount and how fast they're going to sell it at a discount. Yeah. I mean, we're sending marketing campaigns to people we know want to sell mm -hmm. because the AI told us they wanted to sell. Yeah. The homeowner didn't even know they wanted to sell. Yeah. And the AI predicted it based on all the data. Mm -hmm. And so it's like those kind of things I'm always looking at. Like we were sending, I built a text marketing platform in 2011. I want that to sink in. I was the first wholesaler in America to use mass email marketing mm -hmm. back in 2007. Yeah. The platforms didn't exist. I built it from the ground up. It was a desktop platform. Then I added in text message marketing in 2010. By 2011, I was smoking everybody with text marketing and ringless voicemail marketing. Nobody had even heard of ringless voicemail marketing in 2011. Mm -hmm. But I was way out of front of everybody. So that's kind of part of my secret is I find these cutting edge technologies that allow me to get the marketing message out there. I yeah. was the first real estate investor in the United States to get over a million followers on social media. Mm. Why, why is that? I saw the trend. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, it's 2012, 2013. I'm like, this Instagram thing's gonna be massive. I'm gonna lean in on this. I'm gonna get over a million followers. I'm gonna get the blue check mark and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get so many leads off this thing. It's gonna be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So when people see my, the amount of energy I put into it for mm. years, everybody told me I was nuts. Yeah. You're crazy. Why are you creating content from six in the morning till 10 o'clock at night? Yeah. Because I want to make millions of dollars off this platform. And mm -hmm. guess what I did? Every year, there wasn't a year I went by that I make at least $3 million off Instagram. Wow. Yeah. Bu building that brand was very valuable for me. Yeah. 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 So what about like, let's, let's, let's talk to a beginner here that maybe they have 10 grand. And they're like, all right, Cody, I have 10 grand. Mm -hmm. I want to get my first wholesale or flip deal in 2024. What do I do? Yeah. I mean, you said it earlier for no grand. I would just call every agent in town, build a relationship with the agents, try to get deals from agents. Mm -hmm. That would be my no grand approach. My yeah. 10 grand approach. I would get your guys' wealthy deal software. Yeah. It has AI built into it. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd run a search in the areas that I want to do deals in. I'd lead score it. Um, with a wholesale score over 500, mm -hmm. I'd have AI tell me specifically, these are the houses that you need to target. I'd pull that list. I'd premium skip trace that list. I'd bang phones for three, four hours a day, every single day of the week until I mm -hmm. got a deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be, I mean, if you, 10 grand is not a lot. If you want to buy leads, you could do some pay-per-click or you can buy some leads from lead providers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I will say this. Even if, if you're new and you have 10 grand and you go spend it and you don't know how to talk on the phones, you're going to waste your money. Yeah. That's, That's the, the other half of it. Yeah. Is it's leads and conversions. Yeah. You, you have to have both pieces. So yeah. if you're about to spend money, you better be good on the phones. Yeah. Otherwise, call Craigslist leads, work the agent angles, go to another wholesaler in town and say, listen, give me all your shit. All yeah. the leads that you haven't followed up with. Yeah. All the leads that are six months old. Let me bang the phones for you. Call all your old shit. And if I get a deal, I'll give you 75 and just give me 25. Yeah. And I'm going to cut my teeth learning on your leads. Yeah. And I'd be a free lead guy for somebody until I figured it out. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's super deep and most people don't get it because they, and that's why they think it doesn't work because they understand the marketing part. They're like, all right, I got a lead. He said to call him back next week. Uh, I don't know. And then they kind of like, like I said, they miss those deals. And then so much time goes by that they end up just giving up or they, they get so deep in their bank account with marketing and masterminds, yeah. they never close a deal and then they just give up. And imagine this, imagine if you're hearing everything I'm saying, you're like, Cody, I'm not on social media. I'm not an influencer. I don't have lots of money. I'm still new. I don't know what I'm doing. If I was starting all over today and I 
didn't have any money. I had a hundred bucks in my name. I'd go to every wholesaler in town. I told my work, my old leads. I turned my camera on. I'd start a YouTube channel and I'd stream out live. And I'd look at the camera. I'd say, okay, guys, day one of Cody Sperber trying to learn how to be a real estate investor. I'm going to be calling leads for the next five hours and you get to watch me fumble my way through it. And we're going to see what happens. And I just start banging phones live on a stream. Mm -hmm. And I do that every single day of the week for the next 90 days. Mm -hmm two things is going to happen. One, you're going to get hella good on the phones. Mm -hmm. You're going to get some deal flow and you're going to become a, a internet superstar. Yeah. Cause everybody is going to start to catch on. They're going to be, Oh my God, you're in your, your day 70. Yeah. Banging for dude. I remember when I saw you on day one, you were horrible. Yeah. Now you're amazing. Like everybody roots for the underdog mm -hmm. and they want to see you win. And uh, local investors would start sharing your little live streams with yeah. you. Go watch Cody close. Dude. He's getting pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be, I'd be building a brand while building my skill set at the same, same time. Okay, so let's take it up a notch. Let's say someone has, they want to invest 100K a month in marketing. What are Yeah, like, pay-per-click. I'd, I'd, I'd buy pay leads. pay-per-click? Is that what it is? Yeah, hell yeah. Hell okay. yeah, pay-per-click. I'd do some direct mail pay-per-click, and I'd buy leads from lead providers. Okay. But yeah. how do you, like, isn't pay-per-click kind of like... And I'd immediately go uh, get the highest level of investor lift I could afford to get. Mm. Okay, but pay per click. So, would you hire an agency? Is it hard to learn pay per click yourself? Uh, it's not that it's hard. It's just I wouldn't waste my time doing it. I don't think that, as a real estate investor, I didn't say to myself, "God, I hope I get good at clicking buttons on Google." Yeah, you know, like just put me on the phones. Let me get me in front of a seller. Let me do a deal. Yeah, and so uh, I would just I would find somebody that's good at pay per click. Is there and, anyone you recommend? Um. Yeah, I don't have their contact information right now off yeah, the top yeah, of yeah. my head, but yeah, like we give our yeah, you know, we have a couple guys. We have two different groups that mm -hmm. we pair our students with. That mm -hmm. um, when you're a mentoring student of mine, you, we give you their contact information, and okay. you know, you yeah. you're able to call them and get a special deal. Yeah, uh, but I wouldn't be personally trying to like manage campaigns and all that stuff. I know yeah. if you wanted to figure that out, I know Sean Terry has a great pay per click course mm. that will teach you and he'll also teach you the novation process yeah so novations are a big yeah part of how to monetize wholesale deals in yeah. 2024 just because yeah. you, you can to. you can sell them on the mls and kind of get more retail for them yeah so you don't have to get as big of a discount yeah so that's sean's great start. at that yeah he's the only one i know him and Corey boatwright have a course on, on pay-per-click on pay click transition transitioning from generating a nationwide pay-per-click campaign into nationwide novation yeah deals i feel like there's almost like i could see the have you ever seen the graphic of like the caveman turn into like the human yes yeah, yeah so i course. feel like every every time i talk to investors like they start off like door knocking <laughs> yeah. and then eventually they get to the pay-per-click time is money yeah so i i had jerry norton on the podcast and that was like his thing he's like do pay-per-click all over the country and then yeah the challenge with pay-per-click is you can lose your ass real quick if you're not really yeah. fast it meaning like you got to call those leads within seconds of them hitting your inbox yeah mm -hmm. that's the real thing if you're busy if you don't have good people on the phones yeah it could you can burn through a lot of pay-per-click money really quickly yeah Okay, and then one thing I want to talk about marketing really quick. So, for a wealthy uh, investor, right? So, we were spending, <clears throat> we'll say, two hundred grand an event to sell tickets, okay. right? But at first, we didn't have a sales team. We were just like posting, and then we would people would buy, and then our goal was always to like scale it and break even, or maybe make a little mm -hmm. bit of money. Like that was always the goal, and then. One day we're like, man, we, we should we should get like a salesperson. So, <laughs> <laughs> what, what a wonderful idea! If we only had some sales energy yeah, up in here yeah, to actually yeah. make money, it's funny because like now it's like duh. But at yeah. first you're like, all right, like That's you know we got funny. so much going on, we don't know. So then we hire a salesperson, and then we spend two hundred, and let's say we made like two fifty to two seventy, and we're like, all right, this awesome. is great. And then this event, uh, like. A couple months ago, we were like, all right, we really need like a sales because we always thought our problem was marketing. We're like, our marketing just isn't converting. Like we just, we just need more marketing. Mm. And then um, we eventually we were like, all right, let's, let's scale a sales team. So now we have like, I don't know, even know, like 40 or 50 with being onboarded and all this stuff. But our sales team for the event 
is like seven to 10 people. Okay. We spent a hundred, I think 150 and we sold like 400 grand in tickets just by hiring salespeople. So sometimes people think marketing is the problem. A lot of the times, I don't know if mm. you've seen this where everyone sales thinks- Sales cures everything. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, how did you learn that lesson or like- I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm not a dumbass like you guys. I just knew <laughs> right away. Like, That's hey, I, got, I need people to make sales yeah. in order to make money. Yeah. No, uh, I just, yeah, it was intuitive. I just, uh, one of the first things I did at Clever Investor when I started the company was try to find uh, and build a sales floor. Mm. That was the very first move I made. Oh, okay. um, and it, it's, it's funny because sales guys are like a unique culture and a whole yeah. organism on their own. Yeah. It's almost like building an orga uh, organization within the organization. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. They got their own culture. Their and own and we scaled that. I mean, that's how we scaled to 20 plus million, 25 million a year was just by scaling our sales department. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. That's yeah. so interesting that you're saying that. But, um, okay. And then another part about what you said was, um, I forgot. I want to talk about sales now. So, Let's talk about Clever Investor. Can we talk about Clever Investor? Sure. All yeah. right. So talk to me about the history of Clever Investor. Yeah. Started in 2010, kind of as a side hustle project, just uh -huh. wanting to, I loved what real estate did for me and my family and how it changed the trajectory of the Sperber clan. Uh -huh. I'm the first millionaire in uh -huh. my family at age 28, multimillionaire by age 30, all because of real estate, mm -hmm. you know? So how can I not love it? Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like, being successful is your obligation. It's not, it was never an option for me. Mm -hmm. And my let has a great book called the power of one mm -hmm. power of one more actually. Mm -hmm. But in it, he really talks about like, are you the one? Like mm -hmm. imagine if you believed that you were the one mm -hmm. out of your whole family, you're the, you're the guy that's yeah. going to change everything. Yeah. What a shame if you waste that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, real estate changed my life. And I felt like it was like my, my obligation to tell everybody around me. Yeah. So that's why I was so loud about it. When you are, th you never have to make sales. You don't have to be a salesperson when you love what you do and you believe in it that much. 100%. It was easy for me. I had to tell everybody. And so yeah. people started throw, like I told you earlier, throwing 10 grand at me, 10 grand at me. And I was like, wow, I always wanted to be a teacher. I think this would be really cool to help people break out of the rat race. I can make investing education cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Clever Investor was born and we scaled very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. We took off because everybody else was boring ass adults and we were fun and crazy <laughs> and wild. And, you know, it, we were the cool kids and we were new and it was yeah. fresh. We built a community and everything mm -hmm. was great for many years. Uh, now, a lot of my students are people that took my model that are from my local area, like the Pace Morbies of the world. They're, they're doing it even better. Yeah. So it's like I ran the football down the field. Yeah. I did a good job. Mm hmm handed it off and now there's some other superstars running it even further down the field and it's their obligation to do so yeah yeah, yeah and it's cool to watch I'm, yeah I'm, I'm really happy for where this industry is going mm -hmm. do you still have clever investor going or no yeah clever investor still yeah, yeah hell, hell yeah okay yeah because you said you handed I, i'm not off, so I, i'm like, not okay. i'm not as involved with the company anymore mm. as i used to be yeah. um i'm still around i'm still a high level consultant but i'm not on the day-to-day -day yeah any longer Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's been cool to watch it kind of take on a life of its own without yeah. me having to quarterback it on my back the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a great company. Every person there is a superstar, mm -hmm. unbelievable mentors, unbelievable team members. They all love our students. It's mm -hmm. really cool to watch a team of people fight every day and lay it all out on the line mm -hmm. for the students. Mm -hmm. It's rare. You know, a lot yeah. of these gurus they just want to make sales and they yeah. don't give a shit about the student it drives Sell me crazy for 15 grand and they have shitty customer support or no yeah. customers but they don't care about the student they yeah. provide crappy education i hate that yeah i really do mm -hmm. um but we're around we're, we're still we're still doing our thing since 2010 yeah okay so i want to ask you about um mental barriers because you said that right so first i think most people struggle with making i guess like big decisions. Like, uh, I had Brandon Turner on the podcast. Um, and I asked him about when he left bigger pockets. So I was like, all right, you know, I could relate this to the, to the average person that wants to leave their job. You know, you had a secure thing. Mm -hmm. It was freaking huge. You're literally the goat. You're the biggest 
most known real estate investor with the biggest podcast, the biggest platform, all these things. And then what made you decide like you wanted to leave to go start from zero and you, you know, that's going to be hard. Um, you know, he, he talked, he said on the podcast that like, um, that an entrepreneur, uh, it's hard to what was on the podcast and what was off the podcast, but he, he pretty much talked about how he just started getting the bug to do his own thing. And, um, he would have conversations with his wife and they were kind of, you know, going back and forth on what he should do. And eventually he had to just like pull the trigger and just leave. Yeah. What are some of the like big decisions you've made in your career where it was tough to do and like what helped you get over that? Um, I've only had a couple moments in my career where I didn't make quick decisions. Mm. You know, I don't do the wishy washy shit. Yeah. I don't need anybody's permission or opinion. Like I, I, my intuition screaming at me, you know, that's God's voice and I listen to it. And so Mm. I'm, I'm a very fast implementer, action taker. Mm. I see the future very clearly. I know where I want to go. And if you come with me, great. If you don't get the fuck out of my way, I'll run you over or whatever. Like, I don't care. And I have a very low amount of empathy for anybody in my way. Okay. So it, it's, I don't know if I'm just kind of been bu- bu- bullied too much <laughs> as a kid or, you know, something, something made me into kind of vicious, vicious entrepreneur mode. But, um, I've had a couple times where I've had like my number one sales guy. Yeah. I was paying him a million three a year. Mm-hmm. I gave him a Rolls Royce. Damn. Mansuri ghost, white, black exterior, white interior. I handed him the key. So the car's yours paid for a house up on top of Camelback mountain, a multi-million dollar house paying him 1.3 million a year. We were making it. He got an override on every salesperson in the whole, whole organization, mm. killing it. Toxic is all get out mm. believed, you know, sometimes people drink their own Kool-Aid and believe that they're the reason why everything's so good. Yeah. And I just kept telling him, I said, listen, magic struck us. It was the right combination of the right team members at the right moment in history. Don't fuck this up. Mm -hmm. And your attitude is becoming cancerous. You got to stop. You're going to, you're going to talk yourself right out of this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I was scared because he was my number one sales guy. I thought he's going to jack up all the sales. Everything's going good. Mm -hmm. We're having these personal problems. Why, why can't I pull it together and, and hold on? But I held on too long. And you know what? the big lesson in that is if you ever have a cancer Mm -hmm. within an organization that's, that's hurting culture, Mm -hmm. especially in the sales department, the second I fired him and boy, was his fall from grace huge. Mm. He lost it all. Damn. You know, he thought he was the man and he wasn't, Yeah. you know, and my dad used to tell me this analogy that like, whenever you throw a, a, a pebble into a pond, the ripple won't even reach the side of the pond before the, where you threw it fills itself in. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what it's like when you cut somebody out of an organization that's like, you think is, you really need them. And then you come to find out the second they were gone, every other salesperson in the organization lifted. Mm. And they all started making way more oper- more sales. And somebody showed up that said, hey, I want his job. I'll fight for his job. I'll appreciate his job. And the whole culture lifted, the sales mm-hmm. machine lifted and everybody won, mm. except for him. Yeah. And, and years later he came back around and he said, boy, did I F up? Yeah. I'm really stupid. Yeah. And I said, dude, I tried for a year to talk you out of it. You yeah. couldn't get out of your own way. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people get tunnel vision and I don't know who he was getting his information from or yeah. what, but it just, it just, it was really sad. But ever since then, I promised myself I'll make qu- much faster decisions. I'll never allow things to drag on like that ever again. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess like, the advice would be cut down the time that you want to make the decision, like rather make it or not. Yeah. Just make the call. Yeah. Make the call. It's, it's, it's always calculated risk. Mm-hmm. I'm never winging it. Yeah. I know my shit. I study hard. I, I pay attention. I, I, I learn from my mistakes and I'm always following my gut. My gut's telling me, Hey, this is the direction we're going to go get everybody here. That's your job as an entrepreneur. If you really think about it, mm-hmm. what's our role as lead entrepreneur, the founder of the company, mm-hmm is to be the enroller. Mm -hmm. This is the vision. It's crystal clear. Everybody, this is the vision. Is it clear to you? If it's not, I'm going to keep enrolling you until you get it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get in alignment. And once we get in alignment, we're going to go fast. Alignment equals velocity. Mm -hmm. And so I just need 
my job is just to constantly look around the organization and go, who's falling out of alignment, mm. right? Yeah. Because sometimes it's the person closest to you that can hurt you the most if you mm. lose that alignment. Yeah. And trust me, it's people's nature to want to fuck you. It's their nature to want to take care of themselves over you. Mm. They, don't, they might not mean to want to hurt you, but they would, do, they would hurt you if it bettered them. Yeah. So we always got to keep fighting to realign with our sales guys, realign with our managers, realign with our partners, realign with our significant other, realign, 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 because it's easy to get out of alignment. And once it does, if it goes for too long, that's when you get screwed. Yeah. So what about, I guess, last topic, we'll talk about mindset. So let's say uh, yesterday I spoke, right? And I talked about- Did you do good? I did great, actually. Did you get a standing ovation? I did. All right, all right, all right. I like it. I never got so much good feedback ever, and I almost speak at every WealthCon, so I was like, all right. So um, wealthy, right? The wealthy way is, uh, and wealth is an acronym, right? So we have worship, education, affluence, lifestyle, uh, health, and team, right? It was out of order, but you get it. So I talked about that, about how to live the wealthy way. And- in the beginning of wealth, it's a W, right? So mm-hmm. we start with worship. So we talked about my journey um, to faith. So we don't know each other, but like long story short, when I was younger, I was freaking wild, you know, doing drugs, going out, doing all this crazy stuff, um, became successful in real estate, but still was struggling with like going out, partying, and all these things. And then, you know, had a family and then cut out all the party and stuff. But I was still very like, I felt empty inside. I talked about a story where I was in my house, right? Uh, my house is paid off. I have a nice house. Um, have a beautiful wife. I have four beautiful kids. I have mm. beautiful cats. I have a dog and um, two dogs. And I'm sitting on my couch. It's a Saturday morning. My daughter's laying on me. And in my mind, I'm literally in hell. I'm just like, freak, dude. Like, why am I not happy? Why do I have all this crap that I wanted And I'm literally just like Mm. miserable. Unfulfilled. Yeah. Unfulfilled and lost and anxious. Mm. And I'm just like, and someone's like, what, what is anxious? I'm like, dude, anxious feels like you're about to go on stage and talk about uh, and talk to a thousand people, but you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just, and you're just at home by yourself or you're thinking about like, dude, it feels like, oh, I'm about to like go in the middle of the ocean, but I'm just laying in bed. Like, I'm just like so anxious. And like, people were like surprised by that. And so I, I talked to Ryan and I'm like, dude, like this is how I feel. Like I can't even be a good husband. There's no way I could be a good husband if I'm always anxious. And I'm like, and, and my like emotional blueprint is to always combat everything with anger. So I'm like trying to be like straight to the point. Don't hurt me. Like, I don't know. It's super deep. So anyways, I go to Ryan and I'm like, Hey, look, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. He's like, dude, you got to go to church. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to hear that. Like, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want to hear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I want you to tell me how to fix the problem. But um, he's like, dude, just go to church, do it consistently, like pretty much go all in. Um, started and it changed my life. Like it literally changed my life. I got rid of anxiety. I had anxiety for more than 10 years. I would be in the shower as a 18 year old feeling like I'm about to die. And I'm like, I don't know why, what this is, but you know, it just happens. And eventually I got over it, but. So what was it? What was what? What, what was it? Was it your connection with God, your relationship? Was it church itself? So I started going to church and I think first I started learning because the, the pastor, the very first day was like, the devil will make you feel shame for who you are and tell you not to go to church. And that's exactly what was happening with me. I'm like, I can't go to church. I I drink. I don't want to be fake and go to church Mm -hmm. and, you know, Mm -hmm. and do, I do X, Y, Z. I've done this. I've done that. I don't want to go to church and be like this fake person. So understanding that I don't have to live with that shame. So learning and then submitting, there's a lot of people yesterday that came up to me and they're like, Oh, why? Like, how did you learn? How did you like submit to God? Like I've kind of been there, but I haven't submitted. And for me, I was just like, dude, I didn't have any other choice. I was kind of living in hell for for so long. I had to submit. So I think education, just like submitting. And then like, for me, I felt what I think was the Holy Spirit calling me to go that way. So after I decided and, and got baptized, I felt like, 
I felt like I saw stuff. I felt like there was, I became a different person. I started almost having a clear road. Like if you go down this road, it is good. Where before I was always just like, you know, do deals, do this, do that. And then that was it. And so that was for me, life-changing, like for you in your life, like when you're struggling mentally outside of the career, you know, or you're struggling with emotions, like how do you like boost yourself up and like get over hard yeah. stuff? Um, Ooh, that's a deep question because if you would have asked me a few years ago how I did it, I would say I hide my pain and achievement. Yeah. That's what I used to do. Yeah. And I compartmentalize and I bury all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I'm really great at that. Almost to a point where I could have been made a great serial killer. Yeah. Like I felt like I was that good at just like hiding the truth. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like all people that compartmentalize and bury and run from things, mm -hmm. eventually it catches up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, la two years ago, I started going through the divorce process and then my mom, uh, was dying of cancer and mm -hmm. kind of had this really horrible year, great year financially, horrible year emotionally. And mm -hmm. I was just in a, I knew I was stuck in a marriage I didn't want to be in. I knew mm -hmm. I was out of alignment in my relationships, in my partnerships, in my words and my thoughts and my actions. I was all over the place. I was just frantic. Kind of like how, what you said, I was having a lot of anxiety, but I would, I would just work, 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 just because mm -hmm. that's the only thing I can control. Uh, horrible father, mm -hmm. doing a real poor job with my kids to the point where I could tell my, my kids didn't feel safe around me, meaning like they wouldn't tell me secrets. They weren't, they weren't leaning in like yeah. normal kids do. Yeah. And, you know, my kids, they were uh, 11 and 12 at the time. Uh, and so it's like, yeah, they, they should be able to come to you and talk to you and tell you secrets and stuff. But they just were kind of like, almost like yeah. standoffish with me. And I just kind of melted and hit rock bottom. And when my mom died, she happened to pass away in my arms. And it was just kind of one of those moments where you're just like, damn, does it get any worse than this? Like, this is about as rock bottom as it was getting. And that's when you, like you said, surrender, you know, and that's when I decided I wanted to get help. And mm -hmm. I went to, I hired this place, Psychological Counseling Services in Scottsdale. And they, uh, I went for a week. It was a very heavy intensive. It was a men's retreat intensive. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. I'm super, I wish I would have done it a decade earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, worked through a lot of subconscious trauma that I didn't even realize I was carrying around my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other end of that, came out of that experience. I mean, we did 14 hour days for seven days in a row of like intensive therapy, mm. every type of therapy under the sun. And then on the other end of that, I felt 10,000 pounds lighter mm. and a lot more clearer. And I was able to, you know, look at my kids and make a commitment that, Hey, you're going to watch over the next two years. You're going to watch me get in the best shape of my life. You're going to watch me be reconnect spiritually with my creator. You're going to watch me step up and be the best dad you've ever seen in your damn life. I'm going to be mm. the best ex-husband you've ever seen in your damn life. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to become the man I need to be to attract a wonderful, powerful woman in my life mm -hmm. that I've been dreaming of forever. Mm -hmm. Um, Maria is actually sitting over there somewhere, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like, you know, right, right. I, I would have never been able to find somebody like that or be in a relationship like I'm in right now if I wouldn't have went through that transformation. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a lot of work. It took years, mm -hmm. took year, over a year and I'm two years in now and I'm still, still working on it all the time. But the person I am today is in full alignment mm -hmm. with my purpose, my words, my thoughts, my every relationship I have. There's no hidden secrets. There's mm -hmm. no um, uh, red light or yellow light behavior in my life. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's a good feeling, just feeling like, damn, dude, I'm on. Yeah. And I got a six pack for the first time in my life. I'm 45. I, I don't look 45. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's all showing all that work is paying off. And so I, I would want to encourage any entrepreneur type of person, the, f the faster you decide to go upstream and heal your subconscious, mm -hmm. the more powerful you're going to be and the more money you're going to make and the more opportunities will come your way. Mm -hmm. Now I don't walk into a room and the environment changes me. Mm. I change the motherfucking weather. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And that's because my energy is in front. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I'm not, it's not behind me any longer. It's in front of me. So when people are like, how do I get to the next level? Well, you go backwards. Mm. You got to go upstream, dude. Like you got to go heal your stuff Mm. because you're carrying around a lot of things that cause you to react and think and process a certain way. You don't even know where it's coming from. You don't, you don't remember because we buried it. Yeah. Some of the BS that happened to us as kids Mm -hmm. and everybody's got their own version of something. Yeah. So it's like, Hey man, just heal. A healed man is a powerful man, Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, that's, that's the, it's like part spiritual, part personal development and mental uh, and all of it applies towards what our real goal is, which mm-hmm. is being a winner and dominating exactly. in life. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. Most people don't understand that they're really just chasing happiness and they're looking for it in real estate or alcohol or all of it, women or yeah. men or whatever the case may be. But yeah. all right. Um, if people want to find you, where do they go? At official Cody Sperber on all social platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have the at clever investor stuff, but that's only if, if you're into real estate, if you want just to have like conversations with me or mm-hmm. access to me, I, I put out a lot of content that's more than just real estate, a lot of personal development stuff, a lot of personal branding stuff, marketing mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. Uh, just things, just things that I'm into at the moment. I'm, I'm pretty open on social. So at official Cody Sperber, mm-hmm. I don't have anything to sell you. Just come hang out, say what's up. Beautiful. Be, be, be a social friend. All right, guys. This was the Wealthy Investor Podcast. We're out. Peace. <laughs>